I want to talk to all these people on what I call seeing with the eyes of God. You know, the Bible says that God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. God is the only person that can see the beginning from the end. And so God sees the beginning of your life from the end. Amen. Amen. As you're right there, you have dreams. You have puzzles. But the one thing that will motivate you is when you can see your end from the beginning. Hallelujah. That is only when you can see your end from the beginning. I want to say to us that the beginning of every vision, of every dream, of anything in life is usually not very easy. Hallelujah. Amen. It's usually not very easy. Think about the first day you started doing anything in your life. It was not easy. The first day I attempted to cook in my life, in my life, you know, I wanted to fry stew. Remember those days you pour the oil in the pan, put it on fire. The oil, the the the, 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 the fire will just, you know, light up the oil. You see the flame on top of the oil that you want to use to fry stew. You know, those experience, they were not smooth. They were not easy. But today is no longer like that. Amen. Amen. Sometimes back, the steward was sharing his experience on when he started to play drum. The first time he started to play drum. You know, the way his legs were, was vibrating. So to begin anything in life is not very easy. Amen. Even, even for God, God who is omnipotent and omniscient, the beginning was challenging us. Amen. Amen. Let us read Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. The very beginning, Genesis chapter 1. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Amen. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Amen. Amen. Now, see, even for God, the beginning was challenging. Do you know what it means for God to create the heaven and the earth? And yet the earth was without form. The earth was without form and void. Void means it was what? Empty. It was empty. And so everything you are seeing today in the earth came from nothing. Every, every, everywhere was empty. Everywhere was dark. Darkness was everywhere. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want to say to us that for you to start anything, you're going to have challenges. It's not just going to be smooth. It's not just going to be smooth all the ways. Amen. Amen. But you don't have to give up because of these challenges. Hallelujah. You don't have to give up because of these challenges. God did not give up because there was darkness. He didn't give up because everywhere was empty. No. But he had to do what? Create a solution. And what was the solution? He said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. Amen. Amen. And as soon as light came, as soon as light came, every good thing, Every good thing followed. Hallelujah. Amen. God took his time to order the creation exercise very well. He could have done everything all at once. He had all the power to make everything happen all at once. But he didn't do like that. He had to order them in order of priority. Hallelujah. 
we knew that we needed light force and it, and it brought light. After light came, what does light give? Light will give you direction. Light will help you to see. You will not stop. You will know where you're going. You know your left from your right. Hallelujah. Amen. And after the light, every other thing followed just like that. Amen. Amen. So God is very, very organized. Amen. Amen. So no matter how difficult the beginning may be, don't give up. I know as you are there right now, you have questions, you have dreams. And the question at the back of your mind is, where do I start from? How am I going to begin? You know? And outside that, you also come up with questions like, what if I fail? What if I don't make it? They will laugh at me. And all that, you have a lot of questions. Yeah, that fear of failure will not even want you to start. But I want to tell you that today, you have power to overcome that fear. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that God has not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Amen. So that is why today you must begin to see with the eyes of God. You must begin to see what? With the eyes of God. You know, it, from the beginning of this year, we never had any plan, we never thought about anything like starting up a church. There was no plan like that. At the beginning of the year, when we used to do our vision, definition, and all that, there was nothing like that. But listen to me. As soon as I saw the vision written down on paper, as soon as I saw the vision written down on paper, I said to myself that we are starting. Because you know what? I saw this church with the eyes of God. Oh, yes. I saw the church, the future of this church, with the eyes of God. Recently, I had a revelation, and I saw people, multitude, that cannot be numbered with different skin colors, people from different nation, different tribes and nations. You know, and I was as I was meditating on that, God said to me, That's that is the future of the church. This church is going to have people, members from different tribes and nations in the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And so I did, I did not see this church with the physical eyes. I saw it with the eyes of God. I started seeing the ending from the beginning. I started seeing where all is taking us to. And so tonight, I want you to pick up your, how do we call it? Your Tele, is it telescope or what? Telescope. telescope, yes. Your spiritual telescope. And begin to see far. Amen. Tell your neighbor, see far. See far. See far. See far. See yourself beyond what you're, you're seeing right now. Are you hearing me? Yes. And begin to see yourself with the eyes of God. How God really see you. That's how you should see yourself. Amen. Because you are greater than where you are now. You are more than this. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So don't be afraid. You must first overcome that that fear. As soon as you overcome that fear, you can start anything. This is the business that God is made in your heart to start. Don't procrastinate. Just start it. Hallelujah. Remember our key word is what? Start now. Don't waste time about it. Amen. Amen. Overcome that fear. You can make it. 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 Just start. Amen. Amen. Start. And don't be afraid to start small. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be afraid to start small. Job chapter 8, verse 7. What does it say? Job, Job chapter 8, verse 7. It says, Though thy beginning 
was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. I used to like it from the King James Version. He didn't put it there like a promise. He said, thy latter end should, should greatly increase. And that means that for your latter end to increase, you have a lot to do. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are expecting an increase in your latter end, you can't just sit back and fold your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't just sit down and fold your hands and expect that the increase will just come. Success does not come by accident. Success comes by commitment. And so you have to be committed to this work. Hallelujah. You have to be committed to this work. You don't have to allow the challenges of the, the new beginning to do what? To discourage you. No. No. God did not allow the darkness to, to scare him. The darkness couldn't stop God. Hallelujah. Amen. Rather, he created light. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the place of prayer, in the place of prayer, you can create anything you want for this vision. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Right now, we are in the foundation lane process. And in no distant time, I'm telling you, we shall get there. Amen. 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 The future of this ministry is very colorful. It's very bright. I have seen it with my eyes. I have seen it with the eyes of the Spirit. I have seen it with my spiritual telescope. And that is what motivates me to do whatever I am doing right now. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And you need God to open your eyes. You need God to open your eyes so that you can see. Hallelujah. So that you can see and key yourself into it. Amen. 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 So you need to be committed to this vision. I want you to count yourself privileged to be part of the those that are pioneering the vision. Count yourself highly privileged. Because what God is going to do in your life, in no distant time, you won't believe it. Hallelujah. Amen. You say, eh, is it me? Is it me? No, so your beginning is small. So your beginning is small. Your latter end should greatly increase. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, God has great plans for us. God has great things in stock for us. But before these things can be actualized, we have a part to play. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a part. A very serious part to play. Hallelujah. Amen. We all have to walk. Tell your neighbor. We all have, we all have to walk. walk. We all have to walk. We all, we all have, have to walk. walk. We must walk. We, we must, must walk. walk. Until you walk, nothing works. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Yes. Until you walk, nothing works. To do this work. We're not going to do the work in our own strength. Because in our own strength alone, we'll not be able to achieve anything. Are you hearing me? Yes. In our own strength alone, we will not achieve anything. But if we follow God's pattern, if we work with God, we will get there. Amen. Amen. We will get there. And so how did God go about his own work? You know, God had to take time to organize, to plan, you know, you see one thing coming after the other, the first day, the second day, the third day, the fourth day, the fifth day, the sixth day, and then what happened, we saw that everything that we made was what? Good. And on the seventh day, it was impressive. Amen. 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 God rested after he saw that everything that he made was good. And so for you to be resting when things are not yet good is laziness. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So we all have to sit up. We all have to sit up. There is no going back. We all have to sit up. All hands have to be on deck. Whatever you know 
you can do. Whatever you know you can do, start doing it. Are you hearing me? Yes. Start doing it because we are going somewhere. And we are all going to get there together. Amen. Amen. My, my prayer is that God should open your eyes so that you will see what I'm seeing. Because it's only when you, if you can see what I'm seeing, that's the only thing that will motivate you. Yes. If you cannot see the end of this vision from the beginning now, you will not be motivated. But if God opens your eyes to see, to see where we are going to, that will motivate you. So my prayer is that God will open your eyes so that you will see where he's taking us to. Hallelujah. That is what will motivate you to begin to do what you are doing with all commitment. Amen. Amen. With all commitment. Please, I would like us to do what? To persevere. There is need for us to persevere. Amen. We are going to read Job chapter 14, verse 14. It says, If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so there is need for us to persevere in what we are doing. We don't have to give up. We don't have to give up in what we are doing. We have to persevere. We have to continue doing what we are doing. Because in no distant time, your change will come. Amen. I say your change will come. Amen. Amen. If you can wait. If you can wait, if you can wait, the Bible says the vision is for an appointed time. Don't it tell it says wait for it. If only you can wait, you can hold on, you can continue doing what you are doing. Don't allow the things around you, what you see now to distract you. Amen. Because, Amen. because there, are, there will be a lot of distraction. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. There will be a lot of distraction and opposition. Opposition. They will come, and all of these things will come to discourage you. But I tell you, if only you can see the end from the beginning, none of these things will discourage you. No matter how they come, in any form they present themselves, you will not be discouraged because already you have a vision, a foresight. You know where you are going to. Hallelujah. Amen. So you will not allow any of these things, this opposition, or whatever they call themselves. To distract you, you will remain focused and you continue to pursue that your dream until you, you get there. Hallelujah. Amen. The future of this ministry is very bright and colorful. And all of us, we are going to get there together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are also going to read. Amen. Amen. We are going to read the book of Job. Job chapter 42, verse 12. So, the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than its beginning. Are you seeing that? Yes. So, the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and a thousand yoke of all oxen and a thousand sheep asses. Hallelujah. I thought somebody would say amen. Amen. So, begin to sing with me. Are you seeing with me? Yes. Are you seeing with me? Yes, because I'm seeing with the eyes of God. I am not seeing with my physical eyes. I'm seeing with the eyes of the Spirit. I have my spiritual telescope with me and I can really see far. I can see far, I can see the end from the beginning because I know where God is taking us to. Amen. He's going to be far blessed than where we are beginning from right now. Hallelujah. He's going to be far blessed than where we are beginning from right now. You know, this present suffering is nothing to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed. Hallelujah. Amen. The glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. So the glory that is about to be revealed, whatever you're seeing,
sin now is nothing to be compared with it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is taking us there. And we are going to get there. Amen. So I want every one of us to be focused. Don't allow anything to distract you. Keep doing what you are doing. Don't be worried well doing. The Bible says in due time you will reap if you faint not. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, the last scripture we are going to be reading before we rise to pray. We are going to be reading Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 8. Amen. 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 You see, everything is pointing us towards one direction. It says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, better is the end of a thing. So that is to say to us, that where God is taking us to is far, far, far better than where in short, where we are like nothing to be compared to where God is taking us to. And so what do you do? You do what? You forget the things that are behind you. Forget the things that, forget all those accomplishments of the past. Eh? For, I was supposed to say, I count them but go. I count them like sheep. Are you getting me? Yes. Eh? My degree or oh, all those things I achieved, I've achieved so far. I count them as shit. Because where God is taking me to is what I am that nothing to be compared to. Amen. Amen. So I push all of those things behind me. And you know what I do? I press forward. I press forward. No matter the discouragement, no matter the opposition, I do what I press forward towards the mark of the high calling. Amen. Amen. And so I'm not going to give up. I will persevere. I will keep doing what I'm doing. I will keep preaching. I will keep evangelizing. I will keep winning souls to his kingdom. I will keep giving. I will keep singing. I will keep praising God. I will keep doing what I am doing. Hallelujah. Amen. I will keep working for God. I will keep working for God. I will keep obeying God. You know? He said, who will I send and who will go with us for us? You know, when I hear God, God's voice calling, I will say, here I am. Send me. Hallelujah. I will make myself available for God to be used. Oh, yes. Amen. To be used by God. I will make myself available to be used by God. Amen. Amen. Because I know where he is taking me to. Okay, Philippians. Okay, let's just read that scripture together. Philippians. He said, Brethren, I can't want myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Verse 14. Verse 14. Amen. 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 It says, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. For the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you need, the only thing that will give you motivation and push is when you can see the truth end from the beginning. You are a student, you are going to take an exam. The only thing that will motivate you is when you see the end from the beginning, from the time you are sitting for that exam, you already know the results. Are you hearing me? Yes. You already know the results. You already know that you are going to pass that exam. Hallelujah. Yes. You know that you are going to pass that exam. And that is what will give you the push, the motivation to do what? To begin to do all you need to do to pass that exam. You begin to study, you begin to make research, you begin to improve yourself with all you need. Because already you know it from the beginning that you are going to pass. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So you don't allow that 
fear of failure or whatever to discourage you. Amen. Amen. You need to see the end from the beginning. Stevie, Stevie was one of the uh, apostles, right? He was actually a deacon. And you know the boldness that was upon him. What do you think was giving him that boldness? You know, to stand and talk to these people. What do you think was giving him that boldness? Because he has already seen where he was going to. And so all the things that were happening around didn't matter to him anymore. The Bible says he saw heaven open and he saw the Son of God sitting at the right hand of God. So nothing matter whether you kill him or whatever, he was not interested. That was what gave him the courage and the boldness he was using to talk to the people. And he told them the truth. He told them the truth and after all, you know, they yelled at him and stoned him to death. And he saw heaven, he already he saw himself already in heaven. And he said, Father, forgive, forgive them, for they do not for their things. Now I get what you're talking about. God was able to key Abraham 
into a little glimpse of what he was saying. And I'm sure Abraham is looking down from heaven now and saying, God, I never even knew you were seeing it this day. Because now Abraham is the father of many nations and the father of all nations. Kingdoms, religions, but God is all identified with Abraham as their father. Because God said it and it's been so established in into this very moment that we all live and exist. I trust God and I believe God. I believe Him so strongly. Because He says the things that I the hope that I have for you is tough. They are of good and not of evil to give you an expected end. And I know that you are so blessed tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just learn to look beyond where you are. But we are you start. Like we always say, don't throw away the baby with the bath water. Don't throw away the baby with the bath water. When the baby is small, we try to enjoy the baby. Yet the baby is not as useful. The baby doesn't do well. The baby doesn't really have growth. In fact, the baby comes out naked. The baby cannot produce. The baby, in fact, there is almost nothing really to be so fanciful about babies. But we cherish them because we know it's a beginning. We nourish them because we know it's a beginning. We are not on them because we know it's a beginning. So you look at it and you embrace them. And when you look at it, just like we read in the scripture, that says the end of something is better than its beginning. Patience is better than pride. Patience is a spirit. Pride is a spirit. Patience is that spirit that enables you to see the end of a thing. That connects you with the end of something and say, hey, wait, 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 wait. The end has not shown up yet. Wait, keep waiting, keep waiting. The end is better. Patience is that spirit that links you up with the end of a thing. Pride is a spirit that is so uncontrollable and insubmissive. They want to connect to things that are too big at the very beginning. They want, to, they want the end to happen when they are starting. They want the big cars when they are starting. They want the big house when they are starting. They want to have the big churches when they are just starting. They want to have the land that flows with milk and honey when they are just starting. At the very point of beginning, anybody who expects to be living with what should happen in the end at the beginning is operating with the spirit of pride. You're only telling God that, God, I don't want to go through a process. And God is not going to take you anywhere without putting you through a process. Process is a part of life. God said in the story of Jephthah, he said, in the process of time, in the process of time, God is a part of process. He will put you through process. Pride tells you, no, disregard the process. Demand for it now. Let it happen now. Start from the top now. Start from the top now. But patience tells you, don't worry. What you don't start with today, you will get it tomorrow. What you don't have today, you will have tomorrow. It's a bit. You see, that's why I like the commitment that we have around this place. We said to ourselves that for every week, something new, we, we, I try to make sure that I put in extra energy to ensure that I get to see something new. And somebody would like to see new things. Whether it is a single plastic or a single or a pen, or is it, I am somebody who is used to things that are new. If I look around my presence and I cannot identify something that is new, I get tired, I get bored. That's why I know that God giving us this new principle, he knew exactly what he was doing. When he said, operate with the key words, operate with this word, this principle, of new. So every single time, I like something new. If something new does not come into my house, I, I rearrange the furniture and give them new position. I must ensure that I have something in which I must identify as new. Wherever you see me as this, I'll tell you the truth. If I cannot have new clothes, I take the old clothes and I wear them in a new way. There must be something that must be new about what I do. 